The cold front that swept across most of the southern tip of Africa chose not to bypass Botswana, and it was bitterly cold at the start of racing section two at Kumkwane. With no windscreen or side windows to provide protection from the elements, conditions were particularly harsh for the special vehicle brigade, and all they needed early on to make their day was a water splash. Up and down the pits, competitors and service crew were going through last-minute preparations for what promised to be a long and hard day. Uppermost in the minds of teams was to make it safely back to the finish without too much wear and tear on crews and cars. For Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin in pole position in the Team Castrol Toyota Hilux, the big advantage of being at the front of the field lay in avoiding the inevitable dust. A desert race is a long race. It's notorious for having a uh giving you mechanical problems on the route but uh, you know we saw after Dundee that the cars are very reliable and I must say the two hours are going exceptionally well as you know to get one two on the grid for the desert race I think is quite an achievement and also this morning having no wind I think the the dust is going to give me a little bit of an edge because uh, it'll give me a bit of breathing space so it's going to be interesting I'm looking forward to it. Despite the chilly conditions, spectators were out in numbers at the start with pre-race musical entertainment supplied by the Botswana Defence Force Band. At least one local was in fine voice. Also in attendance was the Botswana Minister of Tourism. Oh, this means a lot to Botswana. It is one of the biggest events we have in Botswana annually. The Dota Desert Race. Ah. It's on everybody's lips. As soon as it passes, they want it back. It's estimated that about 80,000 spectators watch the desert race, and this poses a huge logistical problem for the Botswana police, who are responsible for crowd control. Well, uh, as you know, there are two main routes that are used this year. We are talking about the blue route, we are talking about the green route. And remember, we started uh, on the 23rd, that is Thursday. And to cover all the rules, including the DSP, we have to deploy over 700 police officers. There was a huge cheer from the massed crowd when Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin were flagged away in the Team Castrol Toyota Hilux, with the pair running through a gauntlet of excited fans. Taylor and Birkin were followed 15 seconds later by teammates Duncan Force and Rob Howie with off-road races run on real time. That means cars start according to the times they set on the Donaldson Prologue and the old system of starting at two-minute dust gaps is a thing of the past. Team Ford entry of reigning South African champions Chris Fisser and Yapi Pardnost was third on the road among the production vehicles, with a pair finishing second last year in a Toyota Hilux. The start of the race gave the Botswana Defence Force band a breather, with the Ford followed by Fisser's cousin Malcolm Koch and Johan Berger in the Koch & Sons Toyota Hilux. Hot on their heels were Thomas Rundle and Joan Moore, with Cully and Quentin Sulwalt the second of the special vehicles to come under starter's orders. The biggest cheer of the morning was reserved for Hannes Hobler and Nitr Stierger in the diesel RFS BMW X3. Fabulant Hobler has won the Toyota Desert Race six times and over the years has attracted a following in Botswana that almost reaches cult proportions. The crowds who follow the Toyota 1000 Desert Race are impervious to cold weather and dust and an entire country virtually comes to a standstill as motorsport enthusiasts converge in their droves to the start and spectator vantage points along the route. Enthusiasts also take massive traffic jams in their stride and the race transcends all other sporting and social activity in Botswana. It attracts enthusiasts from Lesotho, Swaziland, Zimbabwe and from as far afield as Kenya. The Toyota Desert Race also has social and economic benefits for Botswana. It brings into the landlocked country large amounts of foreign currency and has further spin-offs in that foreign visitors to that race discover Botswana as a future tourist destination. Small entrepreneurs also take full advantage of the occasion to set up stalls along the route that sells a wide variety of food and drink and other goods. 
With the race now well underway, crews faced 520 kilometers of tough racing over varying terrain with sand, rocks, trees and tree stumps, river crossings and other obstacles waiting to take their toll. The route for what was racing section two of the event would be run over two loops with a compulsory 15-minute halt at the designated service park after the completion of the first 260 kilometers. Early stages of the race followed the same route as the Donaldson Prologue for the previous day. Their entire route was much the same as for the 2010 race, but also utilized some new sections that had not been used for many a year in Botswana. At the front of the field, Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin had a clear road ahead of them, and the Team Castrol Toyota Hilux pair had put another five seconds between themselves and teammates Duncan Force and Rob Howie. The gap between the two cars was 20 seconds, but in the context of the race, that was insignificant at this stage of proceedings. Duncan Force started his racing career in single-seaters and is a former South African GTI champion. He was a member of the hugely successful Nissan team in the South African Touring Car Championship, and when Nissan withdrew from circuit racing, Force turned to off-road competition with almost immediate success. He won the Toyota 1000 Desert Race with the Nissan factory team three years in a row, from 2007 to 2009. And a set of circumstances saw to it that each win was achieved with a different co-driver. Former South African champion Evan Hutchison and Donnie Stassen running strongly at the head of the special vehicle field, with the Motorite Revo sounding healthy. The Motorite pair were being chased by reigning South African champions Chris Fiss and Yapi Bardnost in the factory team Ford Ranger TDCI, with lingering dust and the early morning sun often making visibility a very tricky proposition. The fisser bardenhorst combination finished second at last year's Toyota 1000 Desert Race in a Toyota, and the pair joined Ford in the off-season. River crossings are a favorite spot for spectators, and there was plenty of action for this enthusiastic group, with the factory Ford being chased by Malcolm Koch and Johan Berger in the Koch and Sons Toyota. Koch and Berger were the surprise package on the Donaldson Prologue, but while the pair were holding station, the crew from Northwest Province were coming under pressure from Cully and Quinton Sewald in the elegant fuel bat. The dust ahead of the RFS BMW X3 of Hannes Schroeder and Hinnie Tersteger was being thrown up by the Sulwalds. Both the RFS BMW and the Sulwalds had already moved ahead of the Baden Tire Services Nissan Navara of Thomas Rundle and Joan Moore, who had run into early problems. As was expected, the dust was starting to play a role already. Krobler and Tersteger started a minute and 22 seconds behind race leaders Anthony Taylor and Chris Bergen, but the gap had now stretched to nearly four. Krobler had the whole of Botswana rooting for him, but the RFS BMW was coming under pressure from Gary Berthold and Andre van Mielen, who'd built up ahead of steam in the Atlas Copco Toyota Hilux. Behind the Toyota Championship contenders Nick and Ryan Harper in the motorite bat and Herman and Wichard Zulwald were arm wrestling with a cobalt racing porter of Jimmy Zahos and Stefan Kutsia not far behind. The petrol-driven RFS BMW of Christian Deploy and Henk Janse van Vieren had also lost time to the race leaders and was now six and a half minutes in arrears. The BMW was at the head of a little train that included Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar in the Century Racing CR4, Yanni Fisser and Jox LaRue in the International Toyota Hilux, the Zarco of Class P leaders Don Thompson and Wayne Foster, and the Varigo Bat of Shamir Varioa and Siegfried Rousseau. A little further back, Regent Racing teammates Mike Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson and Archie Rutherford and Mike Lawrenson were running in tandem, with both crews handily placed in their respective championships. Behind the Regent Racing pair, former Class P champions Johan van Staden and James Rousseau were doing the chasing in the Atlas Copco bet, with the pair this season competing in Class A. Three disappointments in a row, the Rustenburg-based father and son crew of Willem and Dana Foss were looking for their first finish of the season. Compared with the Kozulu Natal and Cape-based crews, the Fosses had only a short hop to the Botswana border, with a good knowledge of local conditions also a severe advantage. It was a case of so far so good for the pair, but steaming up behind them were the husband and wife pair of Marius and Yolinda Faree in the PHB bat. 
A non-finish on the Atlas Copco 400 saw them relinquish the Class B championship lead with a pair looking to bounce back in emphatic fashion. Rookie Richard Fuller and former Desert Race winner Jeff Minnett were a solid third in Class B in the Atlas Copco bat. Not far behind Fuller and Minnett with a steady Terence Marsh and George Smallberger making his Desert Race debut in the Regent Racing Nissan Navara and Botswana driver Keith Detoy and highly experienced Asutu co-driver Ashley Thorne. Another former Toyota 1000 Desert Race winner in Andrew Van Sale was sitting next to Steve Parker in the Cezanani Jimco with the pair picking up a couple of early places. A few seconds behind the Jimco, there was another little train of cars with the Team Ford Ranger of teenager Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable running ahead of the Zarco of Swaziland crew John Thompson and Clinton McNamara and the Buertas for Food Bat of Bula Buertas and Johan Pretorius. Reigning champions Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer were running at the front of Class D in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux, with the pair holding off the twin challenge provided by the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruisers of Louis Weichelt and Francis Butmar and Cliff Weichelt and Johann Smallberger. <laughs> A little further up the road, there were problems for Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable in the second Team Ford Ranger TDCI. Woolridge was under the car with Huxtable on the cell phone to team manager Neil Woolridge. Say quick for me, what happened here? No power steering. There were also early problems for Kutsia Labaskakhni and daughter Sandra in the race Sonic Zarko, and that handed the Class B lead to brothers Keith and Andrew Makanetti in another Zarko. They were going along steadily enough, as were Class E leaders Gerald LaRue and Rian Hreilung in the Rubicon Ford Ranger. The Free State crew were almost three minutes ahead of Dirk Butter and Kurs Klaassens in the Sezwe Toyota Hilux with Deirdre Hutton and Christo Bosman another three minutes further back in the Transcore Toyota Hilux. A little further up the road, it was the end of the race for the Rurik on Toyota Hilux of Peter Ruthven and Rudy Britz. And what seems to be the problem here? Now the power steering and the rack, there's a problem there. Can't turn it. It just keeps on stucking. Turn it, it's stuck there. And that's the direction you have to follow there. So I think, from here now? Now it's the end of the race. It's no use carrying on like this. <laughs> 